All right, fig people, this is Ross. Recently, we did a video on high-dense fig plantings, high-density fig plantings. And we talked about in this video here that you guys are looking at, one issue that we've been having, um, just something that you guys need to avoid. And that's kind of, I think, what we've been doing over the last few years is kind of really piecing this all together um, but not necessarily putting it all into one place. So that's kind of what I want to do for you guys in this video is put it all together in one video. I thought it'd be better if I'm sitting down, I can think better, there's no distractions, um, and just hash this whole thing out with you guys. Because when we put this video out, it sparked a lot of questions and um, I want everybody to kind of be on the same page as, as where I'm at right now. So what you could do instead of having a very high dense fig planting as I have, because I, because if you saw the video, just quick background, I have these trees here on the south side of the property that are planted two feet on center. Um, there is three rows going east to west and three rows of figs going north to south. So within those three rows in either direction, they're two feet on center. So they're, they're spaced very, very close. Um, this means I have about 100, uh, 240 square feet of growing area back here that I'm growing figs in. So within that 240 square feet area, it's at least been my mission, my goal, to figure out one, well, how close can I plant them? Uh, two, how much fruit can I get in that area? What is the most efficient way, the maximum efficiency way to get the most amount of fruit in that small of a space? Um, and then I guess also is what methodology, what way of training them is probably gonna be the best way. I've been experimenting not just with different methods like planting them two feet on center like this and growing them as bushes, but also I experiment, I'm experimenting with growing them as trees um, and then wrapping them in the winter time. But also we're experimenting with Japanese espaliers or, or cordon systems. What really is the best method to get the most bang for your buck in the area that you guys have? And I'll tell you this right now, um, you could just skip all of this and for a lot of you guys, maybe in very warm places, you're going to be oh, just fine with planting a fig tree, let's say every 10 feet, every five feet, maybe if you wanted to get real close with them, um, maybe 15 feet, depending on how warm it gets, depending on your climate, what your pruning strategies are going to be like, you can go really far with them. And I could, as an example here, because the, the rows are 20 feet in length, I could probably just cut this into three and maybe plant three fig trees per 20 feet and maybe just have six fig trees along this entire back area here on the southern exposure. And what I could do is actually wrap them here. That's, that's kind of what you got to do here in this climate because it gets it's just too cold. You know, if you don't have temperatures that are staying above about 10 degrees in the wintertime, it's going to be difficult to get your fig trees through the winter. So what you probably want to do is wrap them and you're going to want to probably grow them as maybe a tree form or maybe like three to five trunks, bring all those trunks together in the winter time, tie them up and then wrap them. And then you unveil them in the spring and you would get inevitably a very large harvest because you'd have trees that eventually will be very well established um, that would put out a lot of fruit that would have a, a very large canopy to them um, so it's doable that's a great way of doing it uh, but there's a better way and I really discovered this with the use of low tunnels so what I had decided to do uh, not that I was the first person to grow figs in a low tunnel but I think I'm one of the first people, if not the first people, to grow them um, for exclusively in the spring under a low tunnel. So what I do, instead of just growing a few trees and 
and wrapping them like probably a lot of people do in a in a colder climate. I am instead I am uh, cutting them all down to six to twelve inches every winter time. Every fall, they get cut back, and I protect the base. Uh, the base survives, and what I do in the um, in the spring, so about from March first till June first, I'm covering them with plastic or a low tunnel. And the low tunnels are six feet wide. That's the width of the the rows, the width of the the planting there, and they're three feet tall. So because I'm cutting them back so drastically, they're now a low growing crop, and I'm able to then grow um, these fig trees as if they're, you know, a lot smaller and give them an immense head start on the season. And that's for me why growing just, let's say, six trees is just inferior because even if the production was, let's say, better than this particular method, I got more figs, but when am I getting those figs? I'm with this particular method here using a low tunnel and I've been describing the low tunnels now for quite a bit quite a bit of videos now I've talked about how to set them up how to take them down how easy it is how flexible they are you know how incredibly beneficial they are um, by doing this essentially I'm getting fruit that starts to ripen probably sometime around July 15th I have no doubts about that uh, because the trees that come out of my greenhouse, they fruit around July 1st. So if they're in the ground, it's I expect them to be about two weeks behind. Maybe not even two weeks behind. Maybe it's a lot closer than I think. But I would expect to be a, just a safe, conservative estimate. I would expect fruit to ripen with these in-ground trees underneath the low tunnel uh, by July 15th. So that's really incredible. If you were to just unwrap your tree and, and and wrap them, as I'm saying, wrap them in the wintertime and then unwrap them in the spring and let them do their thing, you're looking at probably the earliest, maybe like an August 15th harvest. Um, you could maybe get away with August 1st. That's That would be like the best scenario possible. If you hit everything right, you did everything exactly the way you want, you needed to, and also the climate was really good in the spring, and it was a warm year, and you know it, it's doable. I'm not saying it's not doable. Um, however, this under the low tunnels, I believe, is going to net me a considerable amount of time of an earlier harvest. Uh, that's going to then make this more worthwhile to me. So then the only question becomes, well, which method of planting, which method of training in this high dense system is going to be the best? Because we need to use the low tunnels. That's a first and foremost so key to this whole thing. Because if you didn't have the low tunnels, it's not that this wouldn't work as well as the trees, but you could very well instead just say, well, I'm just going to grow them as trees and wrap them every winter, right? Um, the benefits, I don't know if they're necessarily as as large to really make all this extra work worth it is what I'm trying to get at. So let's assume now that we're going to do this in this particular method here, in this particular style, under the low tunnels, high dense planting. What is the best method? Well, I've decided to make myself a little diagram here. And this is in my spreadsheet. You guys can look down in the description of any of my videos. You'll find this, the spreadsheet there. And you can go down to the bottom. You have, to, you have to scroll over to the right, and you'll see the high-density fig planting sheet that we have here. And this is basically going to tell me exactly how many fruiting branches I can have um, within the 120 square foot rows that I have set up. So Matt, we just basically cut this back into 120 square feet templates and then inserted this in here and drew it all out to make this a bit more clearer. 
Now, the first one here on the left are trees with a two foot spacing. Now, these red boxes is one tree. So every red box counts as a single tree that we've planted within this 120 square feet. Um, each tree is about one square foot. And also, uh, they're alternating here, but really they're not alternating. They're kind of just because of the way this grid system works here. They're about really in the center of this red box and this green box, like the center of this red box and the center of this green box. It's just that, again, the way the grid system works. But the point is, is that they're spaced every two feet on center. And each tree, we've I've decided to only allow three fruiting branches for that year. Anything more than three fruiting branches, we're getting a little bit tight because I believe personally that you need to have about one square foot per fruiting branch. And you can get away with, uh, with a higher, a, a smaller spacing than that. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you could probably get away with eight inches but if you really wanted to be perfect with this and to ensure a harvest on every single branch, because I've talked about really in this last video was the light penetration that has to go into the canopy. If you have too many fruiting branches, if you have a very dense canopy of branches, you're just not going to get the fruit buds. They're not going to form because you're not going to have the light penetration that these trees need. So you need to thin them out. And that was kind of the whole message of this. So essentially with this methodology of planting and this two foot spacing here that we have, we grow them as bushes, but within the bush, they only have three branches. Everything else needs to be pulled out. So if I have something from the base, a sucker, we have to pull those out. If I have other branches that are starting to pop and, and grow buds in different locations, I have to break those off. I have to limit each tree to three fruiting branches and no more than that. It's possible that I could get away with four fruiting branches per tree, but if you count every single green box here the way that we have conservatively estimated this, it's 90 fruiting branches. So instead of 90 shoots, let's just say 90 fruiting branches. Now on each fruiting branch, how much fruit could you have? I don't necessarily know. That is probably for another day. But I would estimate each fruiting branch, you could probably get easily with a system like this with the low tunnels, you could get 15 to 20 fruits per fruiting branch. So if you get, you know, let's say 15 fruiting branches, 15 fruits per fruiting branches times 90, you're looking at a thousand, uh, what, thirteen fifty fruits basically, one thousand three hundred and fifty fruits. So, if instead you were to, let's say, in this one hundred and twenty square feet, plant three fig trees, I would probably guess that you would get about three hundred to five hundred figs off of a fig tree that has about a six by six canopy to it. That's probably a good estimate. Um, so you're, you're looking at a pretty, you're looking at a pretty comparable amount of fruit, I would imagine, per system. So like I said, the difference here is really gonna be in the, the low tunnel. That's really where the money maker is for me. Um, it's a little bit more work, obviously. There's a lot more attention that needs to be paid to these trees to give them, you know, a whole lot of thinning of the shoots to make sure that they're not putting out too many shoots. They're not shading each other out. They're not competing too much for light. We want that light penetration, right? So if we had, let's say, 1350, you're looking at, you know, maybe anywhere from 900 to 1500 fruits depending on 
what system of planting that you're doing here. Um, now we can go to the next one here, which is a not as a dense planting as the others, but this is then with a three foot spacing. And I actually did a uh, a four foot spacing as well on here. And I believe let's just see if I can let's see if we can do one real quick. But essentially, I, f I figured out with a three foot spacing that is allowing each tree to have no more than four fruiting branches, um, you then end up with, well, actually, <laughs> now I thought about this in a conservative way, but each tree realistically has much more room to grow and you could instead you can make you can make an argument that all of these branches could be for fruiting branches. So you could make an argument that instead of having a two foot spacing and only getting 190 fruiting branches, you'd have a three foot spacing. Now you have 70 fruiting branches. But if you were to instead of having each tree have four fruiting branches per tree, let's just say because here's four, right? Here's the tree in the center. Here's a fruiting branch, here's a fruiting branch, here's another one, and there's the last one. So each tree gets four, but let's just say you gave each tree seven fruiting branches, and you spaced them out perfectly. We staked them, we gave them an each individual uh, spacing that was perfect. You, I guess, could potentially, you know, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you're looking at 120 minus 14. You're actually looking at instead 106 fruiting branches. So in this particular system, you could have anywhere from, I guess, 70 to 106 fruiting branches, depending on how conservative you wanted to get with this. Now, I did mention, I believe, that it is my opinion that each fruiting branch really should get a f one square foot. So if you're going to do this in any sort of density whatsoever, like I said, you really should make sure that each of them have one square foot. Now if I did this in a four foot spacing, I think you're kind of getting into issues here because you don't have enough trees, uh, you're not making good enough use of the space um, because in this particular system with the three foot spacing you then have seven fruiting branches which in my I would argue is quite a bit it might be too many uh, that might be too many uh, fruiting branches but I actually can compare this directly because on the west side of the property we haven't mentioned but we did in the video recently is that they're spaced three feet apart. So if I had a three foot spacing, we'll be able to compare them two together and see which one. I guess that's what I'll do. I'll do next year, maybe I'll do uh, seven fruiting branches per tree. And then in the other planting, we'll do three fruiting branches per tree. Um, so that that's kind of interesting. Um, and then I guess, like I said, if you do this mathematically and you were to draw this out, you definitely wouldn't be able to do seven for um, seven fruiting branches per tree. Um, if you did, let's say, then you just would have, I think, too many. Well, maybe not. This would get moved down here, and this would get moved down here. But in reality, they would be in between these two spots right here, in between these two spots right here. So this would become a fruiting branch. These would all be fruiting branches. Yeah, and then this, this row in between wouldn't necessarily be a fruiting branch, whereas these would. These would all be fruiting branches. 
these would definitely be fruiting branches. This would be white, nothing there. So you guys can kind of understand here wh what I'm trying to say now is that there's just some space that pretty much should be left left over and this wouldn't necessarily work out um, all that well. And obviously you could mess around with this and maybe you could get this a little bit tighter than that. But the point is, is that, you know, there's a lot more green. Uh, let's say with this, if I just copy and paste this real quick. Yeah, so there's a there's a lot more green boxes than there is in this one. So that that's kind of what I'm trying to get at here is that I think the sweet spot might actually be three foot instead of two foot. Um, but again, you're gonna have to play around with this in that you may have too many fruiting branches per tree. Seven may be too many. Three might not be enough. So maybe there's something like maybe two and a half space two foot I don't know something like that there might be something that will basically make this more optimal now the other thought is that we can do this as a cordon system and these are basically the cordons here that I've been talking about and I'm growing these the figs like this um, in my greenhouse and really the Japanese were I guess the first people to, to make this popular and it's been on figs for fun and, and our figs has been talked about over there for many, many years. Um, not many people have successfully been doing it for very long, mostly because of where they live um, and those challenges that are presented either with some vole damage in the wintertime or even um, some cold damage depending on where they live. But this is a proven successful method of really high dense plantings of figs so this one we know works out really well and this is kind of where I would say that if you guys are gonna do this kind of thing I would probably do it like that I, I would probably do a Japanese espalier I'm trying to find out here uh, if indeed this particular method or this particular method of doing them two foot on center or three foot on center is more fruitful than doing it like these cordon systems. I don't know. And I also struggle to know just because I haven't had enough experience with them. If I could indeed space them this, excuse me, this close together, you know, this seems really close. Um, you know, basically I have a cordon, a very long cord and you could do any number of trees in here too you know I could have one this this whole thing here could be one long cordon this could be one long cordon or you could break this up into you know six foot long cordons let's say and you could have three cordons here and three cordons here for a total of uh, six you could have eight you could have ten you can do as many cordons as you want <clears throat> the issue is where are you going to put those fruiting branches? So each one, as I mentioned, and even in this planting here, I mean, they've gotten this down basically to a science is they have their fig trees planted in a way that gives each individual fruiting branch and they grow them vertically. They just have one single stem that goes up and that's it. Each single stem fruiting branch is about one square foot apart. Now, I, obviously, I don't have a, a ruler here, but I'll bet you any money that this is not really any closer or much closer than a foot apart. So this fruiting branch here is a foot apart from this fruiting branch. This fruiting branch is a foot apart from this fruiting branch and so on. So maybe they go a little closer. Like I said, eight inches would be maybe the closest, but doesn't this seem really close? It just, I guess on paper, instead of seeing it in person, it just seems like a really dense planting here. So maybe this isn't the best method. Maybe there, there would be some complications. I don't know. Um, but 
assuming this will work because it on paper it should work right it just looks kind of strange assuming it works you end up with only 84 fruiting branches so you're comparing at least these uh these more dense these higher dense plantings here on the left with the two foot on center the three foot on center you've got 90 fruiting branches with the two foot on center 70 to 106 fruiting branches on the three foot on center or then 84 shoots at the closest possible with the cordon systems and you know I don't know I really don't know that's that's really my point kind of of this video which of these is going to be the best I don't know I don't necessarily have any sort of inkling either just yet this is a I guess giving me a pretty good estimation here as to why I have chosen, I guess, to grow them like this, but also to grow them as cordons. Because if you're only going to grow one method, how are you going to know which one's better? You know? Um, so it's going to be interesting, I think. This is, I guess, giving you guys the full picture. That's really what I wanted to do, was to fully explain what it is that's going on, what are the different methods that we're doing, and et cetera, et cetera. You know, all that that we basically talked about here. And to tell you guys that I just don't have the answers. I don't really have the answers. Um, Mike Kincaid actually mentioned something here. Um, he wanted to know, basically, do you worry about the roots spreading past other varieties and then they send up a sucker and it kind of mixes up the varieties? Um, no, because I'm really staying on top of the suckers i'm limiting each individual tree to no more than three or no more than seven fruiting branches everything else needs to get cleaned up and pulled out you know i don't want these things to spread and the base of the plants is is permanent whether it's a cordon or it is the uh basically the spur system that we've set up if you think about these like grapevines either they're spurs or they're cordons and no matter which one you do, you're going to come, keep coming back to a base every single year. And therefore, you're just not going to have to worry necessarily about having too many suckers. Certain, certainly, as trees age, they're going to start putting out more suckers over time. But it's just not something um, that I'm necessarily concerned with because you got to end up pulling up these suckers every year. You know, that's kind of the whole idea. Um yeah so that's I think that's mostly it here that yeah so even this guy here basically really brought on the idea of this video to really clarify all this this sort of stuff here so I think that's it here guys um, Yeah, I mean, this is basically, this guy here is explaining pretty much the uh, Japanese espalier. Now, again, what's nice about this, this method here, is that, of course, we're getting a lot of fruiting branches in a very small space. We're mathematically, systematically breaking this down so that each individual fruiting branch has their own area to grow in. We're making sure that each area is filled in. We have high production that way. But also, we're getting them off to an incredibly head, incredibly efficient early head start with the help of these low tunnels. So for me, I uh, I think the benefits are immense in, uh, in this particular system. And I really am excited to see what ends up happening this, uh, this upcoming season because... The trees are now getting some age. We've got this whole thing, I think, mapped out and worked out. And it's just, it makes a lot more sense now in my head and probably everybody else's head now that this is drawn out. So, yeah, I want to thank you guys here for watching this one. I hope that made some sense. And uh, we'll see you guys again for uh, another video. I hope this, um, like I said, I hope this is bringing some clarity to everybody out there. All right, guys, take care.